From New York, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. George and Gracie. night at your house, and time for Burns and Allen, and time for you to discover the way women all over the country have learned how to give the family a breakfast that is different. Serve Spam fried. Spam is tender, tasty meat, a perfect blend of sweet, juicy pork shoulder meat and ham cooked to a savory goodness. Made only by Hormel, Spam is packed in a handy can, so all you do is open it, cut off slices of Spam, and fry quickly in a hot pan. Serve sizzling hot with eggs or a stack of wheat cakes. And you'll start the family off in the morning with a meal that sticks to the ribs. Try Spam Fried, the quickest, tastiest breakfast you've had in many a day. But start right and get the real thing. Be sure to ask your food dealer for S-P-A-M, Spam. Look who's here, your two delightful spam stars, George and Gracie. Thank you, thank you very, very much. First of all, just in the middle of July, the afternoon was wet and the morning was dry. Well, Gracie, you're in a very, very gay mood tonight. Gay mood? Well, sure, I'm in a gay mood. Everybody's in a gay mood today. Today's the day. Today's the day. St. Patrick's Day. I see. Most wonderful day in the year, and I'm not saying that because I'm Irish. Oh, no, 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 no. Of course, I'm only Irish on my mother and father's side. I see. (laughs) Only on your mother and father's side. Yeah, and that goes for them, too. I see what you mean, yeah. Oh, I can just see my uncle tonight with his top hat and his frock coat looking into the mirror to see if his black eyes aren't straight. (laughs) First on the 31st of August in the the middle middle of of July. July. I'll bet your family was in good spirits tonight. Oh, and vice versa. (laughs) Oh, and George... George, I marched in the Fifth Avenue Parade today. It was the St. Patrick's Day Parade, you know. I know, you know. I was born in New York. I've seen <laughs> oh, those parades. Oh, boy. What excitement. Every year you have those parades. Yeah, what excitement. Born what here, music, you know, What yes. glamour. What bargains at Bergdorf Goodman's window. What crowd. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bergdorf Goodman's window? Yeah, what crowd. Even, even, even the parade didn't stop you from window shopping? Oh, no. Oh, and this is kind of cute, George. A floor walker was peeking out of the window, and he was flirting with me. Flirting with you? Uh-huh. Well, I sort of looked at him, and he winked back at me. And, he uh, winked back at you, yes. I said. And, you know, he looked at... You didn't just... wonk at him first. No, 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 no. Did you ever wank at anybody? No. No, no he, he just looked at me and... Uh... You know who he looks like? Hmm. He looks like that movie star with a big mouth. You know, Joey Green. He was sort of tall. Joey and, Green? Yes, he was sort I of tall. I say it's Joey Brown. Not on St. Patrick's Day. It was on the 31st of August in the middle, in the middle of, of July. July. So you were in the parade today, huh? Oh, yes. And it stopped at 57th Street, and we had a two-hour demonstration. A two-hour demonstration? Yes. Hmm? And there was a traffic light there, and every time it turned green, we cheered. I see what you mean, yes, yes. And every time it turned red, we booed. You booed? Well, we had more Chris, fun. Gracie, I'll bet, I'll bet. There must have been a lot of booze. Oh, no, no booze. Nobody was drinking. Who's on the first? Oh, just in, in the, the middle, middle of July. July. Oh, no booze. Oh, stop, Gracie. I'm getting so hoarse, I can hardly talk above a whiskey. Yeah. Oh, oh just imagine, George. Do you, Hennessy, Let... what I mean? George, just imagine... That's a pretty little... star joke. <laughs> just imagine... Got another joke later that I'll use for Chaser. For chaser. <laughs> George, just imagine little me of all people leading such a big parade. Mm. Hey! Thousand Irishmen following me. Seventy-nine thousand were policemen. I see what you mean. Mm, there Gracie, was I with a baton Gracie, in my left Gracie, hand. Gracie, in the first place, I don't believe you were leading the parade. Oh no! Oh no! Oh uh, well. 
Well, I wasn't exactly leading the parade. I was sort of up in front, more like in the middle. Oh, in the middle? Well, <laughs> more toward the end, sort of like oh, last. Like last, yes, yes. It was a great parade, they tell me. I'm sorry I missed it. You missed it? On the 31st of August in oh, the stop, middle of... stop, Well, I Listen. didn't exactly miss it. What happened was, I was on the sidewalk, and there was a little fellow who couldn't see the parade, so I put him on my shoulder. A little, a little fellow? Yeah, Mayor LaGuardia. And he couldn't see the parade. Wait a minute. Uh, so Mayor, I Mayor, on... Mayor, Mayor LaGuardia? Yeah, it was the 31st of August in the middle of July. Look, I've had enough of this parade and enough of the song. And, George, during the parade, there were men selling shamrocks, green ice cream, furniture, clay pipes, They were canes. selling furniture? Yeah, a man came up to me and he said, he said, he says, lady, will you give me 25 cents for a bed? And I said to him, I said, I said, now listen to me, Tracy, my good man. Just a second. The if I you said, don't mind pausing, I have a line. Well. A very big line. Well, Tracy, the man was a panhandler. No, he was only handling beds. Oh, he didn't have any pens. Well, I couldn't tell. He had on long overcoat. Overcoat. Just the of August. All right, the please, lane. please. Say, Gracie, whenever you meet a panhandler, why don't you do what I do? I just brush them off. Well, Jimmy, with your mustache, you could do it. <laughs> no, what I mean is, Gracie, I don't give him any cash. Now, just the other day, I met a man who said, Mr. I'm starving. Will you help me? Oh, isn't that silly? Why should you help him starve? <laughs> I didn't, Gracie. I didn't. I just reached in my pocket, opened my wallet, and gave him a can of Spam. You keep Spam in your wallet? Oh, sure. It doesn't need refrigeration. Mm. Well, keep on with this wallet. Another joke like that and this program, Bill Fold Up. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, after That's the parade... That's my chaser. That's the chaser. <laughs> Well, anyway, after the parade, Artie Shaw took me home, and we were sitting in the living room, and I said, Artie! Artie Shaw took you home? Yes, and I said, Artie! Didn't I tell you to break up this romance? Yes, and I said, Artie! Oh, stop with that, Artie! <laughs> Artie, were you out with Gracie again last night? Sure, it was on the 31st of August. Oh, fine, fine. Like Gracie, try to get this through that silly head of yours. You've got to split this thing up. Business and romance don't mix. Well, I, I guess you're right, George. You just can't mix business with romance. Well, it's about time you realize it. So, we'll take the romance and give you the business. Hello. Hello. Well, I give up. It was on the 31st of August in the middle of July. Is that the right key? The afternoon was wet and the morning it was dry. You might as well finish it. I met a fair young lady. Sitting under an old oak tree. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And divil a word I said to her. Uh -huh. And the same she said to me. Well! Well, I didn't know you could dance, Gracie. I you was a dance. I yeah. certainly was. Well, George, it looks like you and Gracie are washed up for good. Brother, ever since she and Artie started to say, Wow, I knew you were a dead duck. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, I better break that romance up. It's mm -hmm. lasted longer than the snow on the streets in New York. <laughs> and I know how to break it up. I'll use system number three. System number three? What's that? The old sympathy gag. Oh. It's bound to work with Gracie. Watch. <laughs> Gracie. Well, just a minute. Oh, that was wonderful, Artie. But the next time you hug me, I wish you'd take the clarinet out of your mouth. <laughs> what is it, George? Gracie, uh, I've got something to say to you, and please try to understand. I want you to know it's not because I'm jealous. We've been together for years, and you just can't tear down everything that we've built up in just one day. Oh, uh, well, how long will it take? <laughs> Gracie, remember the first time I met you? Mm -hmm. We were just kids then. That's right. You'll have to admit I wasn't selfish. If I had anything, didn't you always get it? Yeah, until I was vaccinated. <laughs> uh, remember when I took you to the ice cream parlor and we had a strawberry soda? Mm-hmm. You may not believe it, but that day I fell in love. Really? I felt so silly, I... Couldn't look at the soda clerk. 
was love at first sight. Oh, I don't blame you, George. He was very cute. So did Clark. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, I fell in love with you, Gracie. Oh, so that's why you paid for my soda. <laughs> and Gracie, that childhood romance ripened into, well, it isn't just friendship. It isn't just a passing fancy. It isn't just a partnership. Do you know what it is? Oh. Does it hang from the season of ceiling and whistle? Does it hang from the season and whistle? No, ceiling, ceiling. Gracie, boys, a little soft music. Maybe that'll help. Thanks, fellas. Gracie, remember that little tea room on 6th Avenue that we used to go to? The one where they have the candlelight and the gypsy music? Yeah, that's the place. Oh, it makes my heart beat faster when I think of it. Oh, I see. You still remember it. Remember it? I was there last night with Artie. Hello. Hello. All right, boy, stop it. I've had enough. Gracie, don't you understand? I've been talking to you until I'm blue in the face. Oh, please, George Green. It's St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yes. Well, I'm going outside. I've got another system. I'll go with you, George. I want to get you some tonic. Tonic? Why? To fix up your system. Hmm. Oh, poor George. I hope he doesn't jump off the Empire State Building. Yeah, wouldn't that be awful? He hasn't got a, a cold and he might catch cold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Senor Shaw, would you like some advice? What kind of advice? Well, if I were in your place, and if you take my advice, I will be... <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you and Miss Allen elope? But, uh, Senor Leah, if I elope with Artie, who'll take care of the band? Let them get their own girls. <laughs> there, Artie, I think Senor Lee's got a cute idea. Let's elope just this once, huh? Well, look, we'll elope from the El Morocco tonight. It's just the place. It's on the ground floor, so we won't need a ladder. El Morocco? Why not the store club? Store club? Well, Artie, maybe in a year. <laughs> hey, listen, everybody, this'll kill you. What? Gotcha. I just overheard George call up a theatrical agency, and he asked them to send over an actress to pretend she's George's girlfriend. Well, why? Well, to make love to George and make Gracie jealous. Well, say, that's a swell idea. And I'll bet she'll get jealous, too. She's probably a very jealous type if it's the same Gracie Allen. Oh, pardon me, it's me. <laughs> Listen, Jimmy, I know what we can do. Let's double-cross George and cancel the girl on Double cross, George? Yep, and I can get a girl to take her place. Oh, gee, that would be a swell surprise for George. Hey, look, wait a minute. Oh, I've got just the girl. Wallington, go out and call Stillman's Jim. Stillman's Jim? Yeah, yeah, this dame happens to be a lady wrestler. A lady wrestler? Yeah, just ask for grappling Gertie. Okay. A lady wrestler? I've never seen a lady wrestler. Oh, I hope he falls for her. You know, I know one from Cleveland. Well, I'm back. I... What are you two talking about? Mm, nothing's on the 31st of August in the middle of July. The afternoon was wet. Ah, the morning it was dry. I talked to a fair young lady just now on the telephone. And she's coming here from Stillman's gym, and she will break your ball. Oh, oh silly lady. <laughs>
Tonight, we're going to swing low, Sweet Chariot, played by Artie Shaw, the 52nd Street Romeo, who's going to be surprised when he gets a kick in the balcony. <laughs> and by the way, Artie, I... Hey, everything's okay, Artie. I made the switch. Switch? What switch? The thing under his nose is the switch, you know. He made it. You thought it was real, and it isn't. Jimmy, take it off and wait for the judge. <laughs> oh, quiet, quiet. Huh? Hello. It's for you, Jimmy. Oh, gee, I hope it is. Hello? Who is this? Oh, Artie, don't worry, it's okay. Yes, this is Jimmy Wallington speaking. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm very sorry I can't be there. No. No, well, you see, I've got a date with a plate. Yes, that's right. Sorry. Goodbye. Jimmy, did I hear you say you got a date with a plate? That's right, George. You see, there's a very tired dinner plate. Oh, a plate that goes out and stays out late. I see what you mean. <laughs> yes, that's it. In fact, there are thousands of dinner plates all over the country. And they're very tired of the same thing for dinner. Very tired. So here's the suggestion I'm going to make when I date the plate. A suggestion that not only makes the plates on your table happy, but a meal that makes the family say, this is a swell dinner. All you do is open a can of Spam. You're sure of success because Spam is tender, taste-tempting meat with a delicious flavor. Then put the Spam in a shallow baking dish, slip it into the oven, and bake for a few minutes according to the easy recipe on the label. Plan a meal around baked Spam, and you'll take to the table a main course distinctive in meaty flavor and filled with lip-smacking satisfaction. Give your family baked Spam tomorrow, the easiest to get, best-to-eat dinner you've had in a long time. Originated and made only by Hormel, Spam is a perfect combination of juicy pork shoulder and tender ham. Delicious meat with extra goodness. To be sure of a meal that makes a hit, remember to insist on Spam, S-P-A-M, when you shop tomorrow. Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. And Artie, oh, can you picture us a few years from now, a little place in the country? Yeah, vine-covered cottage. A little mortgage covering the vine. That's right. And you're in the living room eating a box of chocolate? Yes, while you're in the kitchen standing over a hot clarinet. Well, you know, I agree with you two. There's nothing like love. And I'm the one who knows. Well, George, now don't tell me you're in love. It was on the 31st of August in the middle oh, of July. Oh, George, how long have you known this girl? Well, uh, we went to school together. Where did you meet her? She's like a piece of Dresden china. As a matter of fact, she was so fragile that we boys used to call her Twinkle Toes. Oh. Boy, I bet she's beautiful, huh, George? Oh, yes, and what a voice. Oh, probably like Nelson Eddy. Nelson Eddy? Well, maybe not exactly like Nelson Eddy. Maybe more like a half Nelson Eddy. A half Nelson Eddy? Listen, what's going on here? Uh, Senor Burns, I have a little information. I hate to be a rat, but uh, Mickey Mouse is doing bad. <laughs> Senor, what's this information? Are you asking me as just the guitar player? Yes. I know nothing. <laughs> but now ask me as the new leader of the band. Mm, I think I see what you mean. And throw in a little cash. <laughs> All right, you're the new leader of the band, and I'll give you $5. What do you know? Who'll make it six? I will. I know nothing. <laughs> you know nothing, huh? Well, you're all jealous. You know, George, I know just how you feel when you meet an old flame. Why, it just happened to me today. As a matter of fact, this girl is just as dainty and fragile as your twinkle toes. Dressed in China? Dressed in China? Suppose she was dressed in slack. <laughs> what difference does it make what she's dressed in? Go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. I said the wrong thing. Well, you see, George, my girl is a little Spanish girl. Spanish girl? <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> Well, I did that for the sponsor. Oh, spam instead of spam. And George, you know, when she looked at me today, she said, Hello, tall, dark, and ham meat. <laughs> ham meat? Yeah. I did that for the sponsor. Oh, I see, Jimmy. Yes. You know, before I left, I kissed her for ten minutes. Ten minutes, huh? That I did for myself. Oh. <laughs> Boy, what a kisser. He certainly has. Oh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> well, here she is. Now you'll see something. 
Come in. Well, George, Twinkletoes is here. Twinkletoes? Say, you've changed. Don't you remember me? I'm George Burns. Hello, George. Oh, my! What a beautiful voice. What a wonderful ring. But then again, it should be. She's in it half the time. Uh, Twinkle Toes, I'm certainly glad to see you. I'm sorry I'm late, George. I was a little tied up. Well, Twinkle Toes, it's like old times, isn't it? When you left home, did you tell your mother who you were going to meet tonight? Zabisco. Zabisco? Well, George, uh... Yes, yeah, Zabisco. I, uh, I, I read that in the night chart when I had my eyes examined this morning. It said uh, Z Y Z Y Z Y. Well? Z Y I need glasses. Well, look, I've had enough of this silly stuff. Well, Artie, George and Twinkle Toes want to be alone. Well, we do. What do you think of that? Twinkle Toes? What is it, lover? <laughs> Remember when we were kids? Yeah. <laughs> Remember those romantic nights under the stars? Yeah. <laughs> Remember when I carried your books to school? Yeah. <laughs> Remember when she carried you? <laughs> yeah. You know, Twinkle Toes, when I first fell for you, it wasn't just your looks that attracted me. It wasn't just your personality wasn't just your mind. Do you know what it was? Does it hang from the ceiling and whistle? Oh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Go ahead, tell me more about that love stuff, George. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and tell her, Lenny. <laughs> oh, quiet. Gracie, will you take Artie away from here? Well, Artie, George is right. Nobody should interfere with lovers. Lovers should be left alone. It's very rude to interfere. George, let me tell you how to do it. Now, uh, Twinkle Toes, you stand over here, and George, you stand over there. Okay, who's the referee? Referee? <laughs> Wait a minute, is this a love match or a wrestling match? There's a difference? <laughs> What's going on here? Well, now we'll begin, and you don't have to worry, because I know plenty about love. You see, I used to be an usherette in the balcony at the Roxy. I say yes. <laughs> now, Twinkle Toes, the first thing you do is grab George in your arms. Do you understand? Well, to be frank, no. Oh, I'm not going to like this. Oh, how silly of me. Oh, I know how to get you together. Here we go. Stay away. Stay away, Twinkle Toes. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Wait a minute. Are you the girl that was sent over here by that theatrical agency? No, somebody phoned me at Stillman's gym. I'm grappling Grady, known as the glamorous gorilla. <laughs> how did that girl get here? Gracie, how did this girl get here? Well, she must have walked the buses around strike, you know. Isn't it awful, George? You know, I always say... Oh, stop, I always stop. stop. No, only when I get off. Oh, quiet. Well... A fine trick for a bunch of grown-up people to play on their boss. What a thing to do. It isn't honorable. It isn't fair. It isn't cricket. It isn't sporting. Do you know what it is? Does it hang from the ceiling? Oh, and quiet, <laughs> quiet. <laughs> now Gracie will sing, Let's Get Away From It All. That was a fine trick. Tired of the cell routine, up to town on the 815, back at night, off to bed, and then get up and start it all over again. Let's take a boat to Bermuda, let's take a plane to St. Paul, let's take a kayak to Quincy or Nyack, let's get away from it all. Let's take a trip in a trailer, no need to come back at all. Let's take a powder to Boston for chowder, let's get away from it all. We'll travel round from town to town, we'll visit every state. I'll repeat I love you, sweet, in all the 48. Let's go again to Niagara, this time we'll look at the fall. Let's leave our hot dear, get 
out of a rut, dear. Let's get away from it all. What do you say we toddle away to Yipswich? What do you care about the fair or where is Yipswich? It would be a novelty to switch to Yipswich scenery. Let's get away from it all. Maybe we'll pack and track at the Yakasaki. Where they are free and happy and being wicky-wacky. Like the Yakasaki do, we could wicky-wacky too. Let's get away from it all. Love will get a brand new start. On some island that we never saw I want to be there with my heart If Artie's name is Shaw What do you know, we pack up and go to Scrum Scram If you were slick, we'd better leave quick before old Scrum Scram The way the map has changed, you say it may not be there Saturday Babe, what do you say to it? Let's name the day for it and let's get away from it all Spam, S-P-A-M, a perfect blend of pork shoulder and tender ham, has become a word in the American language that means downright delicious food. Originated and made only by Hormel, Spam is now used by millions of families regularly. This tender meat has a flavor all its own and is ready to eat as soon as you open the handy can. Spam has dozens of uses. Serve it cold, bake Spam for dinner, fry slices for breakfast. Promise yourself you'll try one new way to serve Spam tomorrow. Use the easy recipes on the label. You'll soon discover serving Spam cold or hot is a quick, thrifty way to give your family grand-tasting meat. Tomorrow when you shop, ask your food dealer for S-P-A-M, Spam. Well, thanks, Jimmy. Well, Gracie, say goodnight. Good night. Mm. George, I'm going out. Don't I look pretty? Oh, do you look pretty? Yes. You kind of like flattery, huh? Sure, I, I like all the Irish. Oh, really? Oh, really, O'Reilly, O'Flanagan, O'Toole, O'Sullivan, O'Connor, O'Neill. Good night, good night, folks. Good night, good night. Join us again next week, same time, same station, for another Burns and Allen show with Artie Shaw, his orchestra, and the smoothie. Until then, this is Jimmy Wallington reminding you to remember that cold or hot, spam hits the spot. tried Hormel chili con carne? Even those who think they don't like chili do like chili con carne the way Hormel makes it, because it's different and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel chili con carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company.